Increasing tension with China has the U.S. military looking for ways to spread out across the Pacific in order to counter Beijing's growing navy and missile arsenal. The U.S. Air Force in particular is looking to disperse its aircraft and airmen, and the service's special operators are now hustling to equip their workhorse plane to operate on land and water. U.S. Air Force Special Operations Command said this week that it will conduct a rapid prototyping effort to increase the runway independence and expeditionary capacity of its MC-130J by developing a removable amphibious float modification. MC-130 variants have supported U.S. military operations since the 1960s. The MC-130J is the latest version and is the backbone of Air Force Special Operations Command's fixed wing force. The $114 million aircraft has advanced navigation and radar systems that allow it to operate in unfriendly territory, but the MC-130J Commando II amphibious capability, as the effort is called, will allow it to support operations at sea and in nearshore areas, according to AFSOC. MC-130J Amphibious Capability or MAC, allows the Air Force to increase placement and access for infiltration, exfiltration, and personnel recovery, as well as providing enhanced logistical capabilities, Lt. Col. Josh Trantham, AFSOC Science, Systems, Technology, and Innovation Deputy Division Chief, said in a release. Seaborne operations offer nearly unlimited places for landing and would extend the reach and survivability of the MC-130J and the commandos who use it, Trantham said. AFSOC is working with the Air Force Research Lab's Strategic Development Planning and Experimentation Directorate and with private industry. The command plans to use a five-phase rapid prototyping schedule that will allow it to conduct an operational capability demonstration in 17 months. AFSOC and private sector representatives are already testing prototypes in the Digital Proving Ground, a virtual setting that includes virtual reality modeling and computer-aided design, paving the way for more digital simulation and testing and the use of advanced manufacturing, the release said. The effort also intends to de-risk the concept for potential use in a future program to give MC-130Js or other C-130 variants an amphibious capability. The last U.S. military seaplane left service with the U.S. Coast Guard in 1983, 16 years after the Navy retired its last seaplane. Amphibious aircraft played an important role in World War II, but technological advances during the Cold War made them less valuable. Interest in amphibious aircraft has increased in recent years, however. Several countries, including Russia and Japan, still operate them, and China's development of the AG-600, the world's largest seaplane, is steadily advancing. China has invested heavily in its fleet of military airlift planes in order to support long-range operations, and the AG-600 provides some niche but important capabilities, Timothy Heath, a senior international defense researcher at the RAND Corporation, told Insider earlier this year. An amphibious plane allows you to reach areas that otherwise are hard to get to. They can also support ships that are stranded at sea or just if it needs to connect with some ship at sea where there is no runway, Heath said. China is expected to use the AG-600 for search and rescue, transport, and firefighting, among other operations. It would be especially useful in the South China Sea, supporting operations around the island bases China has built there. AFSOC officials have said amphibious aircraft would be a valuable capability in an era of great power competition, and Trantham echoed that view in the release. MC-130J amphibious capability will be able to be used by our sister services, allies, and partners, Trantham said, and its use, alongside other innovative tools will provide even more complex dilemmas in future battlespaces for our strategic competitors. AFSOC plans to demonstrate an amphibious version of the MC-130J later this year, AFSOC's commander told reporters Monday morning at the Air Force Association convention. I can say with certainty that our plan is to conduct a demo by 31 December this year. AFSOC Commander Lt. Gen. Jim Slife said in a roundtable with media on September 20. Slife emphasized that a flying demo would most likely feature a single aircraft and would be aimed at validating digitally engineered models that the program has run so far on the aircraft's capabilities. 
The latest rendered illustrations of the proposed model feature large, removable floats that would allow the aircraft to take off and land on both bodies of water and runway independent locations. In allowing significantly greater to non-traditional takeoff and landing areas, MAC would also help curtail aircraft vulnerability by avoiding easily targetable locations. The Air Force had previously announced its intention to develop the water-capable aircraft at the Special Operations Forces Industry Conference in May of this year, as reported by the drive in May. Though the September 14 AFSOC update doesn't provide a significant amount more detail than May's announcement, it does note that a task force of unspecified collaborators are working with AFSOC in the Air Force Research Lab's Strategic Development Planning and Experimentation Directorate to create a prototype. The Air Force estimates an operational capability demonstration could come in as little as 17 months. This isn't the first time plans for an amphibious aircraft with the built-in versatility of the C-130 has come to light. Lockheed toyed with the idea of a Hercules amphibian for the Navy as early as the 1960s, according to Tyler Rogoway's 2015 analysis for Jalopnik, pointing out that such an aircraft would have wide-reaching applications beyond strictly battlespace operations, like rescue missions and firefighting. Slife stressed, however, that the MC-130J amphibious capability would not be a seaplane, per se. I see it referred to float plane or seaplane, which is not actually accurate, Slife said. It is strictly amphibious capability we're after. In other words, utilities and land on either land or water and not be completely a maritime-only kind of platform. MAC prototypes are currently being tested in digital environments and through virtual reality modeling by AFSOC and companies in the private sector, according to the Air Force. AFSOC believes that these emerging tools will help streamline prototype development in such a way that accurately incorporates real-world feasibility while reducing risk. Being able to experiment with existing technology to evaluate design trade-offs and test a new system before ever bending metal is a game-changer, said AFSOC Technology Transition Branch Chief.